it is a belief of cosmic spirituality that the awakened individual should seek for a full understanding of the vast cosmos. And to achieve that understanding, there is the need to appreciate its function. But how can we appreciate its function when we are unable to embrace its evolutionary experience? I sense the need to spend some time in the evolutionary arena because I think that, as a people, our lack of understanding of spiritual evolution or evolution of the consciousness has caused us many ills. A lack of understanding of spiritual evolution has caused us to see each other as good or evil, to be impatient with others, to misunderstand the experiences we go through, to see the world as a sick and pathetic place, to nourish fear, to live a life of doubt, to live a life resistant to change. We are afraid of trying new things because our attempt may be wrong and the concept of right and wrong holds us prisoners, impeding our spiritual growth. Throughout this spirituality session, I would like for us to seek to embrace the fact that evolution is a part of divine law and evolution is that aspect of the cosmic cycle that allows nothing to stand still. Evolution is a must. There can be no growth without evolution and there can be no ascension in the absence of an evolutionary experience that takes the individual beyond the religious consciousness with all its external laws, governance and rituals and into the Christ or cosmic consciousness where the individual is governed by internal laws. We cannot think evolution without thinking consciousness. It is a consciousness that evolves. Evolution extends the boundaries of the consciousness in accordance with divine law. Generally speaking, consciousness moves through simple perceptual, complex perceptual, simple beastly, as we have in the lower animals, religious self to the cosmic or Christ consciousness. By law, we are beings of evolution. We do not become Christ consciousness without change. A seed does not become a tree without germination. There is a process that the seed must undertake to become a tree. And if the seed is resistant to that process, it regresses by way of degeneration and disintegration because within the evolutionary stage of the cosmic cycle, law dictates that nothing, absolutely nothing stands still. 
in our religious self-consciousness. We are prompted to change by external laws. These Paul referred to as the do's and the don'ts and they are administered by the schoolmaster or mistress, according to Paul. But when we are awakened to the law within us, that kingdom or governing principle that is within us spurs us on to change. Evolution channels the consciousness towards that state of perfection or completeness of being that we refer to as fully human. Let us try and envision a world in which evolution is absent. Remember, evolution allows nothing to stand still. So here we are in a world void of evolution. All is standing still. Nothing changes. Nothing advances. And nothing grows. Of course, if nothing is growing, nothing is producing. Because production is the result of change. We cannot produce without changing things from raw material to a finished product. Because change is from something simple where evolution is concerned to something more complex. In the absence of evolution, there is no advancement and there is no growth. There are no fruits on fruit trees. There are no crops. There are no new trees. And guess what? We have no children. The thought you have is the thought you always had. And the only thought you will ever have. Now there is no replenishment of the earth because replenishment comes only through change. Whatever skill you have today is what you always had and what you will ever have because there are no means by which you can advance your skill. There is nothing for you to aspire for and nothing to achieve. There are no expectations and no anticipations. There is no need of expectation and anticipation because all that is will never ever change. Just take a moment and try to envision this world as much as is possible. Remember, if you can envision it, we can achieve it because anything we are able to envision is within law and therefore is achievable. We cannot envision something that is outside of law. We cannot envision anything that it is outside of the cosmic principle. One more thing. Since there is no evolution and all is standing still, you are not allowed to move as in point A to point B. And you are not allowed to move any part of your body either because a big part of change, advancement and growth comes about because we are able to move. How is your creation coming along? Are you able to create a world filled with life and vibrancy, anticipation and expectancy with everything standing still?
Now, I want us to imagine another world. In this world, there is evolution taking place. But evolution does not mean random change. The changes are gradual and they are defined. They are gradual and defined growth, advancement. By growth, we mean we are experiencing a change from less of something to more of something. Or from simple to advance. And let us assume that the number of incremental change between less and more or between simple and advanced is innumerable, allowing us to set goals and achieve, set goals and achieve, set goals and achieve repeatedly. We are constantly moving up a ladder and with every movement, there's a sense of accomplishment. We feel esteem and there is reward. The evolution we're talking about is not just vertical, but horizontal as well. Ensuring that within any given increment, there is variety. There is plurality in thought, belief system, personality, culture, race, religion, and governance. The evolutionary process offers many challenges to heighten our awareness, to make us more resilient, and allows us the opportunity to make full use of our mental faculty. The harder and harsher the challenge, the more contribution it makes to self-fulfillment and character building. And in this world where we are experiencing evolution, there is anticipation and expectancy. There is also a sense of autonomy over growth. We, we, we can, we have a sense of control over our growth experience in the sense that we can change our belief if we are desirous of changing our world. Our actions are linked to our state of the consciousness. And if we wish to move up the consciousness gradient, all we need to do is to change the way we think. If we're able to envision this world, then what we are observing is the dance of the cosmos. And the dance of the cosmos is by no means making reference to some Hindu God. The dance of the cosmos refers to that sequential movement from lower state to a higher state that takes place within the cosmos itself. Such movement is governed by the internal logic of the cosmos and is what gives rise to spiritual evolution. In part two of this series, we will dig deeper into the dance of the cosmos and how this makes life meaningful to us all. <laughs>